Hello, this is my Celestron C5 SCT telescope. It's a telescope I use, of course, for the moon, for the planet, but I also use it for uh, photograph deep sky objects like galaxies. Now, the galaxy season in our hemisphere, here in the northern hemisphere, is about to start, and I travel quite a lot with this telescope. So, this telescope had collimation screw that were Philips screw and uh, I didn't like the idea that if this scope would go out of collimation during the transportation, during the, my trip to location, I had to fiddle these little uh, screws with a Philips screwdriver in the field with cold hand near the corrector plate of the, of the telescope. So I decided to go to replace them and to install some thumb screws. Of course, doing that threw the collimation completely out, and uh, so that was not a big problem, or so I thought. And the night was clear, I went out with my instrument, pointed at the stars, I saw complete... Uh, this instrument was completely out of collimation. The problem was that it was so far out of collimation that I really struggled to get even a round shape for the defocus stars let alone to center the shadow of the secondary on this defocus star. So I called the night off and the day after I went and started looking on the internet what else could I do in order to collimate my scope more carefully and particularly in a more comfortable way rather than chasing the stars even if I was looking near to Polaris. So I found that people use artificial stars and uh, people can buy an artificial star or they can make their own artificial star. And I was quite intrigued, so I decided to give it a go. If you want to create your artificial star at home, you have to think what a star looks like. They are simple, tiny speck of light in the dark sky. So we need to have a way to create this pinpoint source of light and one way to do that is to go to your kitchen grab some aluminum tin foil like this one then take a cutting board get a needle and start punching tiny holes on this uh, aluminum tin foil something like so can make some increase in the pressure, you can change the size of the stars. Now, all you need to do is to put a source of light behind this aluminum uh, tin foil. And uh, we can take a lamp like this one, or we can take uh, a headlamp, we can take the screen of your computer, or the screen you use to take flats. Now, I like this lamp because I can wrap my aluminum tin foil and you should be able to see the stars. Now, with these stars, I was able to, I put it far away from my telescope. This C5 has like 20 feet is the closest focus distance. So you may not be able to do that in in house if you have a longer instrument than the C5. But I was barely able to focus on something in my house with the Celestron, so I put my lamp somewhere farthest away, the, the, the farthest away I could from the telescope, and I start collimation. And, uh, and this is how an artificial star that is the focus looked like with my C5. Now today, though, I don't want to talk about collimation on a CT telescope using uh, an artificial star. What I want to do is instead to tell you what else you can do with an artificial star. When I collimated my telescope, I start thinking what else could I do in my house using an artificial star that would benefit me uh, when I will be in location. One thing we can do is to test optical performances of lenses. So here I have the Olympus Zuiko OM 300F 4.5. This was a decent prime telephoto lenses in um, the 70s and the 80s. And I think it pr was produced until 2002 or something like so. And 
is nice piece of glass has a large large opening retractable dew shield and manual aperture control ring smooth focusing experience that's great with legacy lenses they were made for be focused by hand and so this is what we do for stars it's a great experience so this is one content that i have and i'd like to use for uh, stars but i have also the olympus zuiko om this is the 200 millimeter f4 and here you see i have attached the dedicated 2x teleconverter so, so this is one other thing you want to test finally i have my canon fd 300 this is the f.5 version and um, the focusing ring is extremely smooth and is better already you can see that it's better than the zuiko because the aperture can be controlled at step of half stop at a time and not full stops like in these other two Olympus lenses. So if start at f5.6, I don't have to jump to f8, I can test an f6.7. So with this artificial star, I also tested the optical performances of these legacy lenses to see if they had coma, which type of aperture would minimize or correct coma and chromatic aberration. And I also tested just for fun my Go to lenses for astrophotography. This is the Samyang two, uh, 135mm f2, and I usually use it at f2.8. Um, and so I test also this lens. So, this is what I do in order to test my lenses with an artificial style. For instance, I take a bike light and I have already fitted with my uh, aluminum tin foil and I have punched two holes. You see, I have two artificial stars there. Now, when you do that, you should try to get the hole as small as possible and as round as possible. You don't want to tear the, the border so that when you take a photo, it may look like if your lens is suffering from coma. One way to make sure that you have at least one good star is to punch more holes. So in the image we will see later, I didn't use this system. I use another system where I have many holes so that I'm confident that some of them will be round and small and useful for our star test. Okay, so you see my artificial star down there. This is my Samyang 135mm f2, used at f2. And here you can see the LCD screen, the live view on, from my camera. Now, I don't want to overexpose the star, so I went to manual mode and I set the shutter speed to 1 400th of a second. One thing we can do with this artificial star uh, method is that we can familiarize with the focus. We can see that when the stars are defocused, they look like balloons, so they are completely blow up. And we can also see that more I focus, the more I focus, the smaller the stars become. And when I start to overshooting, then uh, they get balloons again. So we can use this uh, method in order to try practicing our manual focusing skill. And uh, okay, let's say maybe this is focus. Uh, with an f2 lens, f2.8 lens, you have to be very precise with the focus. But let's suppose this is um, this is focused. So I will take a photo now, and let's review this with this uh, image. We can magnify and go here to see. And now you see that we have a problem with the stars. Now the stars were not in focus. You see you have diffraction rings, you have this spot in there. Sometimes you get a, black, a darker center and a brighter outer rim. Sometimes you get this, depending on how focus, how defocused you still are. So the best way is to use a button of mask in order to be sure your focus is perfect. Now let's see when I put the, the button of mask on my Samyang like so let's go to magnify the stars and see that i were not in focus so you see that the middle spike there will move with respect to the two that form a 
cross and uh, it should lie in the middle of the other two fixed spikes in order to be focused. Now this uh, manual focusing we did that created this problem with the stars is because we were out of focus. So a button of mask with this kind of lens is, is really a must have. And so now I can slowly tweak the focus ring of my lens and try to bring the middle spike to be exactly in between the other two, something like so maybe. So we remove that and now we can take a test shot. We magnify it just to verify that we don't have any problems anymore with the stars. And there you are. You have not anymore this uh, large star with a brighter center. Sometimes you get with a darker center. So a button of mask is absolutely a must. And if you want to test your performances, your optical performances for the lens, then simply take a shot like we did. That was f2. And now move to f2.8. And now to maintain the same um, exposure, we have to move the shutter speed to 1 to 100. Take another photo and then we test it also to at 4, F4. And again, a shutter speed of 1 100 and we take another image. So this Okay, so we are back to the computer now. Let's see the performances of uh, of our lenses. In particular, let's see what I did before with Samyang. You can see that this was an image I took with Samyang, and that was the original star field, not the one you see in the segment of the video uh, before. Um, so here I did more stars because I want to be sure that they would be uh, round. And you can see here on these stars over there, on these two stars there, you see the problem and here you see the problem I mentioned before with the um, with the focusing. Now this focusing issue, it you can see it also in real imaging. So if I'm going to magnify this lens, well this image, you see that um, here these stars at the bottom there has some problem. You can see here that it has some diffraction rings hairy disk or something like so. In, in, in the stars you see that you have quite a lot of chromatic aberration around. So unfortunately when I took this image I was at f2 and I didn't have at the time the button of mask and so you see that you really need such a tool in order to properly focus and you need to experience a bit how you can focus at best your lenses. And you can do this in the comfort of your house with the uh, artificial star. You also these stars here you see that it's some problematic, has some problem. So instead of look at this, let's consider what we the stars we use in the um, the segment of the video where I show the procedure. Here are the three stars. You see that this shape here, here we are at F4, is not comma, is just uh, a bad shape, a bad a bad hole in the aluminium uh, tinfoil. This is much rounder, this is much rounder, and they were on the same central part of the frame, so I'm pretty sure that this is not comma. Also, you see that it's not changing. If I take the image at F2, the shape is absolutely not changing. And so this is a real artifact of me punching and tearing a little bit the uh, aluminium tinfoil. And that's why it's important to get more stars so that some of them will be uh, good enough to tell you to give you some indications. And uh, what you can see here, if you look at the other stars, particularly this one or that one, is that there is no large difference between shooting an F2 or shooting an F4. So the Samyang is quite a very nice lens. It can be used wide open and it will improve very much by F2.2. Eight. Some people say it's even better at four. I'm not sure that the improvement is worth the extra stop of light you would lose by stepping down the lens from f2.8 
to f4 what it may get easier is to focus because you will have a slightly larger depth of field at f4 rather than f2 or f2.8 but overall this lens is a great performer and is known is reputable it is basically one of the best lenses you can get uh, for for astrophotography work so, so Let's start looking at legacy lenses here. And in particular, let's see the OM200 f4 at f4. Now you see that it's completely different type of lenses from the lens from the Samyang. You have, we have quite a lot of aberration. Uh, this is not really due to poor focusing. It's really something of the lens. The lens has no fancy glass in it. It's just multi-coated. It's a 40 years old lens. And that F4 is expected to have some chromatic aberration. Now, you see also the shape of the stars. All the stars, they look pretty much the same. So it's not a defect in the way I punched my, uh, my holes and uh, they are not really round they are not really sharp so let's go to see what happened at f5.6 now if we compare the star shape is improved dramatically they are much rounder we can even test it at f8 now you see chromatic aberrations start to go down look at the difference here and there and this is because the more you the more you step down your lens the better it become so f8 is like the sweet spot for this lens is a bit too dark for astrophotography uh, f5.6 is usable and i did manage to get some decent images out of it this is the zuiko 200 millimeter f4 used at f 5.6 I was unguided on a star tracker so that's why you have somehow elongated stars but as the chromatic aberration is still there is manageable and still it's it for be a 40 years old lens I don't think one could complain much so this is definitely a lens we can use for some if you are on a budget and you have such lens and you need a prime telephoto lens, this is something we can use. Um, if you add a teleconverter to this lens, then things will get worse. You see here how poor the star shape are at f4 compared to without the... Um, without the teleconverter now if we consider the f5.6 with the teleconverter things are getting better still we are not there yet in terms of star shape they are there is a bit of chromatic there is a bit of optical aberration around and you see chromatic aberration is still there and when you go to f8 with the teleconverter well, I'm not really sure this is a nice image. So, uh, ditch the teleconverter if you want to do deep sky astrophotography. It is fine to get it, to keep it on if you need to photograph, say, the moon. But for the stars, the teleconverter is not something you would like to use. So now let's... So now let's see the other Zuiko lens I have. This is the OM300. This lens is... a uh, decent performer in daylight but to me it's very bad for the stars you can see here these stars were at the center of the frame you have this type of coma they look like little comets this is using the lens wide open at f 4.5 but we can use it we can check how it performs at f 5.6 it changed the color of the chromatic aberration a little bit, but the star shape is still very bad. And maybe only at f8 you start getting something decent. And uh, you can compare with the Zuiko f8, the 200 mm at f8, and you see star shape is much, much better on the 200 mm than on this 300 mm lens. So 
If you are in between the two, go with the 200 millimeter and ditch the 300 millimeter Zuiko F4.5. Now there is another 300 millimeter out there that is much cheaper than the Zuiko, and uh, this is the Canon FD300 F5.6. This is an image at full aperture, and you see that star shape is not that bad. They are pretty round. There is quite controlled chromatic aberration. And uh, let's see it. The nice thing of the Canon FD is that you can move in half stop. Instead of half stop, you can close down your aperture ring. So we can we don't move from f5.6 to f8 like in the Zwicko lenses. We can get intermediate value like the Samyang and we get for instance to see the f6.7. Now you see that stars they get a bit better, not dramatically so, but still a bit better, and uh, chromatic aberration is still well uh, under control. So you see that the lens performs in a different way. The Samyang 135 is of course the best of the four, uh, it's usable at f2, Two. It's very good at f2.8, it's excellent at f4, although I'm not sure that the amount, the, the improvement I have between f2.8 and f4 is worth the extra stop of light that I would lose. So I usually use this lens to uh, f2.8. Now if I have to pick a 300mm lens, legacy lens, and I had the possibility to take the Olympus or the Canon FD. I would do. I would go with the Canon uh, FD every day of the week because it's performed better on the stars. The Canon FD is usable at f5.6. The chromatic aberration is not very much. The the shape of the stars is quite round you can improve things stepping down to f6.7. In terms of the Olympus Zuiko 200, I would not use it at f4, I would use it at f5.6 and uh, yeah, I would not use either the teleconverter because it's getting simply too dark and the optical quality is further reduced. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you like the thing you can do with a simple artificial star and um, thanks for watching, see you next time.